Shalom. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. All right, so <clears throat> sure, most of you, <clears throat> especially if you're Israelite men, have heard about this uh, whole controversy surrounding this uh, basketball player by the name of Caitlin Clark. She looks like an Edomite. I don't know if she is or not. <clears throat> you know, haven't had a chance to test her spirit to find out. But at any rate, she plays for the NWA here. Uh, the Women's National Basketball Association. Now, just to give you a little uh, backstory, this league has been um, suffering in terms of, or struggling to, uh, in terms of viewership, all right? People weren't tuning in to watch these games, all right? So as a result, they're not generating money. People are not showing up to the games People are not buying merchandise, you know, like the, as opposed to their uh, male counterparts. You know, this has been a really um, unprofitable endeavor for uh, women <clears throat> for the most part, okay, until this, uh, Caitlin Clark is her name, came along this year. And this is her first year playing in the WNBA. Now, she was a college standout, she was a star. I think she just broke the, or she broke the uh, record, uh, NAAC or NCAA Salakia record for the amount of uh, points scored. I think she broke Pete Mar Pete Maravich, Pistol Pete. Um, she broke his record, okay, for the number of points scored in college. At any rate, this woman has brought some serious notoriety and publicity to the NBA, or WNBA, all right? People are turning it, uh, tuning into the games. People are showing up to the games, all right? They're, um, the Indiana Fever, I believe that's the team that she plays for. They're selling out all of the home games, all right? Which is good for the league, okay? Like I said, viewership is up. People are actually tuning in to watch the games now, all because of this woman's uh, talent. All right, which is a beautiful thing, especially if you are, you know, a female playing in this league. Okay, so there's a lot of hate. You wouldn't think there would be, but there is um, expressed toward this this female they're upset because she's getting all the pub all the shine and you know and we know why but at the same time it is what it is you know everybody gets to benefit from her success everybody okay now as you can see here this is titled uh, WN WNBA players are petty right and Charles has his take on it and he's, he tends to be fairly objective about a lot of things okay and this is no different everything he said is spot on and I'm gonna play it alright as well as another video just to show um, you know just how petty uh, females are okay now the title of this lesson is going to be women are self naturally self-destructive okay because what you're about to hear and what you're about to see just proves that they have absolutely no idea the damage that they're doing to their own game okay to their league by expressing hate toward this female i mean if nothing else they should have nothing but love for this chick because let me tell you something i played basketball in high school all right, and I played in front of crowds. I played in empty arenas. And playing in front of an empty uh, arena or in an empty arena with no fans to support either team is kind of depressing, right? Now, even when I wasn't playing, 
at home and I was playing away and there was a large turnout for the team that we were playing, right? That was inspiring because you hear the, 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 the jeers from the other team, they're calling you names, but it inspires you, it motivates you to play harder, right? Um, and just the whole idea, just people filling up the stands, you know, it just makes you want to play harder. It's just it's good to see whether you're at home with the home crowd, the support of the home crowd, or the away team. Okay? Anyway, these women, they look at, they can't see the forest for the trees. Okay? They are self-destructive because they have nothing but hatred toward this, this female when they should embrace her and thank her for what she's done to the league. Because if I was in a league that was, you know, uh, on its way out, because it had to be subsidized by the NBA, by the men's basketball league, because they were doing so poorly in terms of, you know, uh, uh, attendance of their games. All right. So if people are showing up to the games, what does that equate to? Bigger contracts. Okay, they're going to make more more money as players. So why wouldn't that be a good thing across the board? There's no negatives whatsoever to this woman, to this female coming into the league. Everybody gets to benefit. Okay, every player gets to benefit because, I mean, at the at the end of the day, it's all about money. And if she's generating more money in their games, that means it's going to translate to bigger contracts, more endorsements. Because these, these companies are going to see, okay, now people are tuning in. Um, it's worth giving, you know, these players, the good players, not just her, but the other good players like Angel Reese, all right, who seems, I, I guess she's an Israelite woman. She's really good as well. She's not getting quite as much pub as this one, but she's good. She's really good. So that means she gets to get noticed and she gets a multi-million dollar contract at some point if she plays her cards right. But no, nah, man, they, they did not embrace or welcome this woman with open arms at all. And you're about to see it. So without further ado, let me play it. You'd be on inside the NBA talking about the WNBA protecting somebody from violence. No, I thought like, man, these girls getting ready to hit the lottery. I mean, this is a great time to be a woman in the WNBA. Caitlin, I mean, what she's done for the game the last couple of years, she is a shining star. I didn't think she was gonna have to worry about this, all this petty nonsense that's going on, and it's really unfortunate because she's bringing so much notoriety to the game. I watched more college basketball in the last two years. Women. -wise. I have my entire life. They act like she didn't earn it. They're like, well, she's only getting this shine because she's white. Is race a factor? Yes, race is a factor. But her resume speaks for itself. She just set the record for the most points ever scored. They didn't prop her up just because she was white. Her accolades speak for themselves. And because she's getting endorsements and people are coming to see her, we got this petty jealousness going on and it's really unfortunate. Did you ever think you... And, and that's just it. It's, it's nothing but jealousy jealous of this chick here you know when she is doing a lot for the game you know because if it wasn't for her this league would still be unnoticed and you know most people let's let's be frank here most men when they hear about the WNBA they got nothing but negative stuff to say about these chicks okay because no one turns in or tunes in to watch the games no one shows up to watch the games well they didn't until she came into the league all right, so it's a win-win situation for everybody, okay? And again, to my point, it just shows just how self-destructive these women are, okay? So before I show the next video, I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get a scripture here uh, because there is a spiritual meaning behind all this, all right? And this is to reinforce the importance of number one men in leadership positions okay because women are driven by their emotions and all this this jealousy against this one uh chick that's helping them all right they they can't see the benefit they can't look at the big picture all they see is oh she's getting more props than us she's better than us okay instead of looking at it for what it is 
This is Job chapter 39, verse 17. Because Yahweh hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. So the Heavenly Father did not create the woman to have the wisdom that men have, okay? Because this wisdom allows us to be the judges of the earth. It allows us to be objective. It allows us to be rational, okay? It allows us as men to be reasonable. And these are all attributes that men need to lead, okay? You cannot lead with your emotions, okay? Because when you lead with your emotions, all logic takes a back seat to one's emotions and you make foolish, irrational decisions, okay? You can't exercise sound judgment when you're led by your emotions, all right? And this is why uh, in the business world, oftentimes they tell you to sleep on, um, you know, a decision as opposed to making a decision right away, okay? Especially if you're if you can tell that you're emotional, if you're angry, if you're upset, and that not just doesn't just apply to the business world. It applies to all aspects of life, especially when you're going to make life-changing decisions or even small decisions. All right, you always want to think things through, okay? Because you're more inclined to be emotional, all right? And if you're emotional, if you're emotional, when it comes time to make a decision, your decision won't be based on sound judgment. All right, let's read that again. Job chapter nine, uh, 39, verse 17. Because Yahweh hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. And that also includes the scriptures here. Okay, and this is why the Heavenly Father says, the flock of my pasture are men. Okay, because we have the wisdom that's necessary to be the judges of the earth. Okay, because this is the way it's going to be. This is a foreshadowing of what's to come in the kingdom of heaven in terms of rulership. The 144,000 consists of men. Okay, that's who the Heavenly Father is dealing with. And women, not to say, and I'm not trying to diminish the role of a woman in any way, shape, or form, because women are a blessing too. Those emotions have to be used properly, right? Okay, because women are designed to be a help meet. Well, that's what you need in order to be a help meet. Okay, you, they, they provide that emotional support to men. They provide that emotional support to the children. Okay, <clears throat> so women serve a very, very important purpose. All right, now you got a good woman in your corner. You know, even if she's emotional, there's some semblance of, 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 of wisdom in terms of not being, not being led completely by their emotions, okay? Being able to be a support or a help me to their husband, okay? And that's very, very important. And today, the vast majority of women in this world, not just uh, Israelite women, okay? Across the board, even the, the heathens, they're devoid of wisdom, all right? So let's go ahead and watch uh, this last video here. Just a few seconds. So pay attention. This is Caitlin Reese here, number 22. And pay attention to this chick here, all right? Now watch this. Now, what was the reason for that? There's absolutely no reason for her to have bumped her and knocked her down. All right. She did that. The ball was already, you know, on the other side of the court. This was after the fact. And as you could see, that was a penalty. Uh, the ref called a foul on this chick. Right. So it's, it's just self-destructive. Why would she do that? She's angry. Why are you angry? Look at all these people that showed up. To watch both of these guys, well, primarily for her, but again, you get to ride her coattails and it's going to catapult everybody else to success, like I said, which is going to translate to bigger contracts and endorsements, right? I got one more scripture and then we'll wrap it up. Didn't intend for this to be long. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. 
Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Now, granted, this is sort of out of context, or this is a different scenario, but it can it can apply to anything that involves a woman. Okay, because it just it's it's uh, an illustration of the self-destructive nature of of women. Okay, if they're not led, right? So in this case. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Well, in this case, the house happens to be that WNBA league, their job, their profession, right? It would be wise to allow things to unfold in terms of Caitlin Clark being able to come into the league and be the big success that she is because everybody's going to benefit. Now people are tuning in and watching their games. All right, people are now selling these these games are selling out. All right, before this year in 2023 and, and prior to that, no one showed up to watch their games. Okay, and that can be soul crushing. All right, I remember what it felt like to show up at an empty stadium. All right, you just it's like ah, nobody's watching this anyway. I mean, you still play hard, don't get me wrong, but I can guarantee you. And any athlete and every athlete would have the same sentiment, I'm sure, that when you showed up, even if you were playing away, right, you didn't have the home crowd to support you, it was still an electrifying environment that made you play harder, right? I, well, I, I can speak for myself. I can guarantee you that's the way I felt every time I stepped on the court when there were, uh, you know, fans in the in the stadium. If I were playing at home, oh man, I was even more inspired. Okay? You got people in the stands, family and friends yelling your name and supporting you and whatnot. So it, it's it's a win-win situation, like I said. And this is different because this isn't high school. This is professional, right? People are paying money to see these get top dollar to pay these to, to watch these games. And these uh these companies are going to see this and they're going to, to see dollar signs endorsements okay she just signed i think a, a 20 million dollar contract or endorsement deal with nike if i'm not mistaken <clears throat> all right any one of these other female angel reese i guarantee you she's going to be next right okay so again the the fact that these women can't see that this is a win-win situation for everybody it just speaks to the self-destruction or self-destructive nature of women all right so um let's read proverbs again every wise woman buildeth her house but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands and that's what you see in this wnba league that the foolish and they are foolish are plucking it down with their hands by their behavior, by their attitude, by their unwillingness to accept this young lady um, for what she's doing for the league. Okay, you don't have to like her as a person, but you can acknowledge the fact that, oh, man, we're, we're, we're on the map now. You know, people are taking notice and they're showing up to the games, right? But you're not going to see that if you're just overcome by jealousy and these broads are overcome by jealousy and they, they can't see the forest for the trees. All right. So the take home message for you Israelite women out there is to recognize that the Heavenly Father made you the way you are for a reason and he, you were created to be ruled over by an Israelite man. Okay. And it's supposed to be done in righteousness. Right. And hopefully, you know, if you hook up with the right Israelite man, that's exactly the way you're going to lead your life, okay, or live your life, all right? But again, this is a foreshadowing of what's to come in the kingdom of heaven, all right? There won't be any foolishness uh, in the kingdom of heaven. There won't be women led by their emotions, sabotaging and destroying their house, okay? Because these women of the day, everything they touch, you know, is, is destroyed. They sabotage. All right, with that, I want to say all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Until next time, Shalom.